Ever since you were little, you know you've wanted it. You know you've wanted it so bad you could feel it. Well, it's here. Finally, we have it from Banggood. Thank you guys for sending this out and getting it lost in the mail and having it found again only to show up in the Thor way. Indeed, the Z-Blaze Thor is here and it's in this bag and it's ready to be opened. Let's take a look. I'm feeling what you guys are when you order a, uh, a watch and it just seems like it takes forever to get here. Um, yeah, we could have, should have reviewed this about a month ago, but honestly, it somehow got lost in the mail. And then suddenly, it showed up. Just out of the blue. I mean, we totally given up on it. Here it is. Enough of that. Let's open it up and take a, wow, it's got, it's, it's really got a nice box. It's, uh, yeah, fancy, almost like alligator skin or something. And there it is. Whoa, look at this. It's got its own little pocket for the manual. This is a gift watch, if there ever was one. Nice, the way they packed it. All right, we got the black one. First off, notice the uh, brushed black on the on the side. It's got a cover on it. Let's pull that off. We can get our nails in there. Okay, that's the little cover that comes on it. It's got the nice edge. Oh, it still has a little screen protector. Can you see that right there? I'll probably pull that off later, but we're going to leave it on now. We'll take this out. Open it up. Whoa! Dual connected. Oh! Dual clip. I'm <laughs> I, wow, and it's got a nice inner red to it. Yeah. Okay. On the back, we have the charging port, which means we must have some more stuff in the box. It's got the two light diode uh, heart rate sensor. And I read up about this. It's the original Samsung heart rate sensor with an improved algorithm, they say, for getting better heart rate data. And Z-Blaze embossed on the back with a screw to take off the nano SIM cover to get inside. Four screws to take the whole back off and you've got yourself a watch. Speakers on the side, one button, camera. That looks vaguely familiar. Does it look familiar to you? We just might have to do some watch comparisons. There are a lot of holes on here, so it looks like if we were to slide that in and come all the way up, you could put this on a really, really tiny wrist. <laughs> it would look really funny, but you could do it. You really could. So that's a nice benefit. There are some watches that even when you go to the last rung, you're not able to, uh, you know, tighten them up enough. And for the big guys, pretty good. It opens all the way out to there. All right. Well, what does it look like on a, <clears throat> quote, normal arm? Maybe a little hyperactive arm, but normal. Let's see. Here you go. I know I haven't even turned it on yet, but I'm enjoying this double clamp thing. Hey, nice. It's, it's a stretchy kind of a rubberized band. It's pretty flexible and it fits nice. All right, enough of that. Let's get into the box. Let's see what else we have in here. Do we have, how do we go? Okay, there's a little pull tab here. Oh, how cute! Oh! <laughs> I'm going to have fun with the box. It's got a charging dock. And this looks surprisingly a lot like docks that we've seen before, but we'll verify that this is a universal kind. Works with the other watches. Snaps right on. And we should have the charging wire. that lets us plug that into a standard USB. Yep. And there's a screwdriver in here. Any extra screws? Mm, yep, yep, there's a few extra screws in the bag. Because we always have trouble sometimes when you uh, take these things off and put them back on that the screws need replacing. So you get the extra screws and screwdriver, the power charging cable, and, of course, the dock. Then, up in the upper part, we have the manual. Wow, the book. I bet there's multiple languages in here. Yes. All right. There's the English side. User manual for smartwatch. Now, as we get into this, um, 
I want to share with you that this is a uh, AMOLED screen type of a watch with the 400 by 400 pixels. This is a common size we're seeing in most of these Android watches and uh, it's a brilliant type of a display. So that should be excellent for use in any kind of condition, even outdoors. Okay, tells you a little bit more about how it's all working. And it does have a side camera, which means you can collect pictures and video from this watch. And you want to download an APK. All right. Do that for tethering. Oh, this is how to download APKs in general for both iOS and Android. And it's using the WIIWare app which is a newer one from Sinware, which changed their name to Yware. And uh, that's it. Then there's other languages in the back. So Funduware is, I think, uh, similar. The um, MediaTek uh, smart device app also might work, and they want you to use Yware for connecting and tethering this watch to a phone. Let's turn it on and see what it'll do. Before we activate it, let's check the specs. We're looking at the Z Blaze Thor in black, earning Android 5.1. It's got a 1.3 gigahertz quad core MTK6580. And these are the bands you see here for uh, network frequency. And it says 850 as well as 2100. It's possible that might be 3G in the places that use 850, like AT&T and at least the... Uh, the cities uh, around the United States. Again, you got to check with your carrier and find out if these things will be compatible for you or not. There's more information, the languages, and it's a one point, actually three nine inch, but 1.4 inch with cor cor Corning Gorilla Glass 3 on this one and 326 pixels per inch. We're running a full 16 gigabytes of RAM in it, well, of memory, they call it ROM, which is read-only memory, which is totally incorrect, but its overall memory is 16 gigabytes divided up where RAM of the processor is one gigabyte. There, for all of you who complain, I just repeat what the Chinese put on these things, and it's all wrong. We tried to straighten it out. It has GPS in it. It's a two megapixel camera with software interpolation up to five megapixels, and it's nice that they're being honest about it here. They're all 2 megapixel cameras. We haven't seen any real 5 megapixel cameras come along on a smartwatch yet. Uh, they're all up interpolated. But it's a fairly decent picture, as you've seen. A 350 milliamp hour battery that has about a two day standby time, and that's generous. Uh, you have to have a lot of things turned off or have airplane mode turned on to get that kind of uh, battery life out of it. So it's typical in terms of the overall characteristics of many watches that we've seen with the enhanced memory, having 16 gigabytes on board. All right, oh, pressing the camera. Button's on the top, Let's give it a shot. It just vibrated and we're coming up with the big balloons. We've seen that on some of the other watches. Now you notice the bezel, it's got a little white thing around the edge. It's got a little triangle here. 15, 30, 45. Other than that, it's really smooth. It's a smooth glass uh, cover on here. We have to confirm our language. So let's take a look at the languages that we have. Mm, quite a few. Okay, we're getting into some here and there. Do you see your language? I believe it was set for English. And we'll confirm that. You get a chance to put in your weight, height, and walking target, and male or female, to get started for all of that uh, uh, fitness stuff. And then here's the QR code you would scan, and that would take you to a place where you could download the WII um, fit, was it? Uh, where, right? WII where app. Uh, but you can do it right straight from the Google Play Store. You touch it and you come back now and we're into the uh, actual watch faces. So let's take a look at these because I think there, some of these are going to be pretty new. Well, 
we're going to time out quickly, so we have to move through these. I'm going to come off camera and go right back to the beginning, and let's start at number one. And we have an active background watch with bubbles floating. Have not seen that one before. That's nice. Second hand kicking around here and digital time. It's in 24-hour mode. And another interesting one. Okay, we're getting a, a portfolio of new watch faces. Most of these, oh wow, look at that. Most of these are a picture behind a digital uh, time. It's an easy way to implement this. However, uh, doing it with motion like this is definitely different. Have not seen this before. Wow. So the Thor is reaching into some new territory for us with animated graphics. And they're not just GIF images because they're not just flipping and repeating. Notice that? They're actually tracking along. Very fun. Wow. <laughs> How come you guys that have the Thor already didn't tell me about all the incredible faces that come with this watch? None of these are uh, repeats of anything we've seen before. Beautiful. There, we've got our analog, if you want to call it that, watch as opposed to digital. Okay. We've got a uh, day of the week and seconds, along with a bright white display. And in black. And something with yellow. Good resolution on this watch. You're seeing the edges and everything. Seconds ticking off up here. Interesting candy color kind. Digital watch. And very creative work. Okay, we've got digital and analog, I guess. 13 being 1 o'clock and 37 being over here. We haven't set the date or time. It's just straight out of the box. So what you see is what you get. There's one you see as a cover shot on many of the ads for this watch. That's a pretty one. All right, we've seen the turning record player type of a design before. But maybe not quite like that. Oh, seen that green one? I think this was a custom face that was made for St. Patrick's Day 2014, 15? Long time ago. And then the plus sign, when you're on the network, would let you add more watch faces from the server. We are doing a first look now, so we are not actually on the network, and none of this is, uh, is active. Um, so we're just going to take a quick overview. Oh, look at that, falling leaves. Oh, I'm going to spend hours with this watch. This is fun. First thing I'm going to do is get over here to settings and fix that timeout. Goodness, way too short for a guy that talks as long as me. 15 seconds. Let's go up to 30 minutes. Now we've got some time to put in on this. Okay, let's go back and let's get the overview of how this thing is laid out. If I swipe down... I get this display, got 74% battery, out of the box, not too shabby. Um, tells you if you have a SIM card uh, or you're tethered by Bluetooth to your phone. And another page, common page, where we have uh, volume or silence. You can pick your, your uh, choice of sound there. This is the one that lets you flip your wrist to see the time. Airplane mode, cellular data mode, GPS, and... You have the brightness level that you can change from low, which is really low, see that, to, oops, to mid, which is what we're shooting with right now, to high, which is uh, blooming out the uh, background, right? It's so bright that it uh, tends to wash it out. Of course, the camera is going to automatically adjust. But we like to run it in the mid, unless I have that display brightness going. This is Bluetooth, turn on and off, Wi-Fi, turn on and off, and then your steps for your step counting. Very common Android 5.1 implementation. We've seen a lot of that. At this level, you go to the right, and it shows you your notifications. When you switch this way, you get all of your apps. You get your music player. Now, that's a different background for the music player, and that's it. You just have those items. Okay, and if you go up, 
you get weather if you're connected and have downloaded your weather information and nothing to the left or right here, but it's trying to update it. So that's the overall layout of the watch. So where we go next is a quick uh, run through of the apps. Your standard contacts would show up in here and you either swipe down or you swipe to the left. On this watch, it's a swipe or swipe to the right. Swipe to the right does it. Phone is where you put in your phone number and you would dial it. Now, if it has a SIM card uh, capability and it comes back no SIM or SIM error, then that means this is meant to be a standalone watch. If it came and it gave you two choices, local or, um, or Bluetooth, that means it's a tethering kind and you could actually make calls tethered to your phone. This does not do that, so it means it's meant to be a standalone watch. The only way you can make phone calls with this watch and any Android watch is by putting in its own SIM card. It's not the kind you're going to have on your arm and talk and receive phone calls from your phone. Uh-uh, doesn't do that. That's called the tethering watch. We've got a great beginner's video out that you can watch uh, later that explains all that stuff to you. This is not a true full tethering watch. This is a standalone watch phone. Messaging is your SMS messages, and you can do all your settings set up here for the things you need for messaging. Okay, and that's the whole phone stuff. Then we get into our overall settings. We'll come back. Remote capture, when we're tethered, lets you press here so you can use this as a remote trigger to take a picture with your phone. Basic browser, basic calendar, and these calendars don't have anything more than just a basic display of the, the information. And it shows you the day of the week that you're on um, lit up. The clock is actually your alarm clock settings, and that's standard. Many reviews on this, many places if you're wanting to know how to do that. I won't keep doing it over and over and over again. This is the camera, the internal camera that comes here. Okay, let's take a nice picture, but notice how tricky it can be to try to get it just right. Uh, boom. Oh, you know what? I'm shooting a video now. See the numbers clicking off? Okay, well, we're doing a video, so what do I do? I'll move it around a little bit. <laughs> there we go. And it's saving. Ah, or maybe this takes just the picture. Yeah, I think that just took a picture. So we press here, and there's the picture we just took. Do I have pinch and zoom? I do. Multi touch capability on this watch that is very 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 nice very nice i can double tap to take it back it looks like triple tap does nothing well brings up details okay details for selected item okay wow i don't know where the details went i think i can either touch that or if i'm here i can slide to the right to get to it there's the video Oh, maybe I accidentally deleted the uh, picture. All right, let's play the video. I'm not hearing any sound, but then I haven't checked sound to see if it's loud or not. But there's the video. And it doesn't jump around too badly. It looks pretty good. Details here. Oh, the detail is to delete the selected item. So when I said OK, it actually deleted it. Sorry about that for the picture. But that's the camera. The gallery is where you can see all the things that you've shot if you want to go there or we just slid to the right from the camera. Music is your onboard music player. You can scan the whole hard drive, I guess, in here to collect your music and be able to play it from right there. Remote control is to play the remote music on your watch remotely. So this is internal music to the watch. This is external music in your phone. Basic sound recorder. Let's try it. Hello, everybody. You are looking at Thor. I mean, the Thor. This is the Thor. The Z Blaze Thor. Done. Save. Recording list. And here it is. Hello, everybody. You are looking at Thor. I mean, the Thor. This is the Thor. The Z Blaze Thor. Not terribly loud, but not too soft either. The speaker being on the side is a good feature uh, because that. Um, brings the sound right to you. And, you know, if it's on your arm, you can just kind of lift it up near your ear and hear it if it is soft. 
Sound recorders tend to be a little soft in general compared to phone calls or um, music that you might play anyway. Your file manager, here's where we can actually get a peek at what you've got. Look at this, we have available 12, a little over 12 gigabytes of the 16 gigabytes. Where's the other gigabytes? Used up for the operating system, the firmware, the installed apps, all those things. But it leaves you with 12 gigabytes of space for installing apps, running music, playing videos, whatever you'd like to do. Very nice. You tap on it, you're into all of the stuff. You could go into movies if you have any, music if you have any. All those things would be stored in here. Pictures if you have any, recordings, there's our little audio recording, and so forth. Okay. This is where also you'd put your clock skin uh, information if you want to install custom watch faces, which yes, you can do on this watch for sure. Find Me is a link to your phone if you've got it tethered that you can start and make your phone ring to locate your phone if you've lost it. Our health area has both the heart rate and the pedometer. In the pedometer, you have now the, inter the ability to do an, in to do an interval uh, pedometer, which is where you start it, and it'll start tracking seconds and steps at that point. So then you can compute things with those results. And the heart rate monitor, like I said, is based on the original chip. You see, it just started glowing green down here, one diode. It's the original chip, uh, Samsung chip is what it says in the literature, but with a, an improved algorithm to give you better heart rate data. So, you get it on your wrist, you want it to be a little bit above that down part here, you want it to be snug but not too tight, you don't want to mess with it like I am, and you want to give it a few seconds to settle down, and it should give you a heart rate. While we're talking about that, I have a video up there already on pulse and heart rate uh, with uh, smart watches, and later we'll be doing one on blood pressure related to the devices that do blood pressure readings. This watch and none of the Android watches do blood pressure, at least not yet. It gave us a uh, first reading, but then it settles down over time. So what I really wish it would do is like go for a while and then get the actual number and then record that once it stabilizes. You see it started at 61. It's stabilizing in 76 to 80 somewhere. And it's bouncing around quite a bit still. My heart rate is not moving that much. I'm not going from 70 to 80 in just sitting here. So I'm questioning the accuracy. As I usually do on these, I'm getting kind of jaded on the, unfortunately, on all the health stuff because it's just not up to par yet. But it is a heart rate, so if you're really looking at whether you pass 150 or something, I think it can help you on that. But if you're uh, concerned, if you're one, if you, if you're 70 or 75, you know, for like a uh, a sedentary uh, heart rate, I I don't know if I'd trust that. Uh, whether I just glaze through because that's what you'd see when you scroll at the beginning, and when that's all set up, it should give you your weather in your area. Voice search is your, okay, Google, ooh, I didn't say that and trigger your device, I hope. Your, okay, <clears throat> Google thing that will let you do voice search. The, the uh, Google Play Store is active here. Whoa, I guess I did touch it. And, of course, it's going to want you to sign in and set it all up. And when you do, you can download apps from the Play Store. And it's got, I presume, Google Maps. Why they're not using the actual icon, I don't know. They've gone with their own uh, overall icon for the installed apps. And of course, when you install your own apps, they will show up uh, uh, at the bottom of this with the appropriate icon. But for the implementation on this watch, it's a, a dark red icon with white writing. We covered everything except settings. Let's get in here. Sound. Basically, the sound that comes out of the watch. Alarms. Ring volume, and then you can uh, set the different ring tones, whatever you'd like, and your default notification sounds, and change those, whatever you'd like, and you can turn it on to vibrate if you want to.
You like how I'm just moving through this, everybody? Brightness level is a slider that lets you adjust incrementally how bright you would like your display. Watch the blue up here. There's where I blow it out. There's where it's too dim to read. And I try to adjust it so it displays on the video pretty close to what I'm seeing on uh, real life. And those lines you might see rolling through here, that's not on the watch. That's a, a beat frequency between the frequency of the camera and uh, the refresh rate of the screen. Um, that we normally don't even see, but you are seeing it now, maybe because um, uh, uh, just the interference between the two scan rates. Sleep time for the screen, as low as 15 seconds, as high as 30 minutes. App adaptation. I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, okay, uh, but it's there, and it's part of the display. Oh, you know what that might be? That might be putting it into the little square uh, as opposed to the big circle. Usually that thing is done when you press and hold the side. Yeah, that's up here. You see, this is where third-party apps are, are squeezed down to a little square, and this is when they're expanded to full. So you can get to the corner menus and things. But what app adaptation is, is I don't know. We're going to have to play with that one. That's display app list style is only one and it's a list like you're seeing here. The connection op options are Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. You can run this as a Wi-Fi hotspot, turn on airplane mode and uh, your GPS. If you have a SIM card in, you have access to cellular information and that's where you change your APN numbers and everything if you needed to do that. Mobile, mobile assistant is that barcode, QR code that you need to scan in order to uh, tether to your watch. Remember, it's Y-Wear, W-I-I-Wear. You can just get that straight from the Play Store. Gesture, uh, screen on raising, and pedometer services. If you don't use the pedometer, turn that off and you'll save battery. If you're not going to raise your arm to look at the time, turn that off and you'll save battery. But we are going to do that, so we're going to leave that one on. And then Power Savings is a, its own little area, and it gives you an idea of what apps and things are using the most power. And you will almost always see the screen is eating up your most power. So try and keep the brightness down as much as possible, and you'll extend your battery. That's the biggest trick of all. Language and Input lets you change your languages, and we already looked at all of those at the very beginning. These are the installed languages. And here's where you can change and install your own custom keyboards if you want to. And you have um, your voice input and your text-to-speech output, which uses the Pico TTS and sounds like this. This is an example of speech synthesis in English. Now, there's an idea of how loud and bright the watch is, because you saw me turn the volume on media all the way up. This is an example of speech synthesis in English. And there you go. So it's... Hearable. The watch is hearable. It's not blasting, but you can hear it. Date and time, you can set it to automatically use your network provided stuff. If it's not getting the right time, turn off the automatic time zone and select your time zone manually. Or you can set everything uh, manually if you want to. And you can change from 24 hour to 12 hour time, which is typically what I use, the AM PM time. Resetting the equipment. If you have that turned on to back up your data, once you're logged into Google, you can do that. It'll uh, back everything up and restore it, sort of, for you. You can do a full-on factory uh, data reset. It says erases all the data, but don't totally trust that. If you've got pictures or music or whatever, recordings, make sure you clear them out manually ahead of time because I can't tell you for sure that those will be wiped out. Uninstall applications. There are none here. Sometimes the companies ship with Facebook and WhatsApp and Twitter and some others pre-installed. They're not on this watch, so we don't have anything to uninstall. And then about the watch. This is where we learn about what we've got. We are doing our fun testing on a Z-Blaze store, Android 5.1. The security patch information, baseband, and kernel is what we look at. Monday, March the 27th. And then the build number down here, 2017-327. So check yours. If your build number is this or higher, then you're on good firmware. If it's lower than this, you're going to want to check to see if you have an update waiting. And you come in here, 
after you're on Wi-Fi and you've turned the watch on long enough for it to really acquire and settle on Wi-Fi. Don't just turn it on, go here and try it. Wi-Fi may not have connected yet. So give it 10 seconds, but really give it a half a minute. Then hit that button and it'll go out there and it'll attempt to uh, connect with the server and see if there's a firmware update waiting for you. If there is, make sure you have a good charge on it and then go ahead and accept the firmware update and it'll set your watch up for you. I'm not on the network. This is a first look and uh, just straight out of the box. So, of course, we're not getting it, getting anything there. And that's settings. And we have looked at all the other apps in here and... We have looked at all of these fun watch faces. I can't believe these. These are so cool. 3D. Very nice. Um, wow, we whizzed right through that. I think it's the fastest ever. The band is a uh, very twisty, lightweight, breathable, wearable, sports kind of a band. And the watch looks uh, relatively, uh, I hate to use the word, waterproof. Because that implies dunking. I would not dunk this in water. Could get in around the button. Could definitely get in around here if you've taken it out and didn't put it in right. But splash proof, yeah. I'd give it splash proof for sure. We'll have to check the... Uh, I don't think it, it said the waterproof rating on here, did it, anywhere? Uh, check the specs. If it's an IP67 or 68, you should be able to swim with it. But my guess is this is going to be like a 65 or something like that. And where do you get this one? Well, you get it from Banggood. I've got a coupon for you down below in the show notes. By the way, if you're watching this on your TV or your Xbox or even your phone, you might want to go to your computer. If you're not able to get to show notes, you want to try to get there because that's um, it'll say show more right below the video. Click on that and then you can just click on a link and it'll take you right to this page and you can get a discount on that price using the coupon code directly from Banggood who has provided us the Thor for your enjoyment and play. And who knows, maybe uh, you'll pick one up. We'll see you again soon.